Um, I want to thank again the board and all of you for the way that you give. We're getting so many more comments on the YouTube uh, channel because of the way that uh, you've given. We've been able to upgrade the camera, the the uh, audio, the video. So I, I just want to thank you guys for that and how it's such an outreach to the community and then so many people that I know across the United States that that tune in uh, to God's word. Uh, we're going to look at the Bible today. We're going to continue the series. This might be the last message there on how, how, we, how we should live as a Christian. And one of the things, not any one of them that we've looked at the last several weeks go in order. They're all different uh, topics that we've been looking at. Today we're going to look at rest, question mark. How, how, do, you, how do you define rest uh, in your life. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 11 in, uh, in verse 28 and 29, but let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for this church. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you the hope, Lord, that we have in you. And so anything that's on the minds of anybody today, uh, Lord, it's myself or anybody here, you quiet our hearts uh, may your spirit move within us that it will give us strength and hope that we know that we are eternal, that we're eternal souls, and no matter what goes on in this life, that Jesus, we can rest in you. Father, may we see through your word today, no matter what we hear, no matter what phone call, no matter what's said, Lord, we can take a deep breath, and then we can say, Lord, you're in control. So, Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you a question. How, how, do, you, how, how do you rest? Uh, what do you do in your day off? Where, where do you go on vacation? Uh, isn't it amazing how we go on vacation and you get back to that first day of work and you're supposed to be rested and you're more tired than when you, when you left? Or, or maybe some of you, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a hobby, uh, and that's how you rest. And a lot of us love those, uh, whether it's Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon, you, you love, you, you know, if you just, you just love to, whether it's the breezes out on Sunday, you just love to crash, take a, take a nice, nice nap. You know, that's how you just get refreshed. That's rest to you. You know, it's funny, I was preparing for this and knew I was going to speak on this, and, and I had to be out uh, quite a bit yesterday, and I usually don't go on Saturdays, even though my message is pretty much prepared. I still don't like going anywhere. I like going over it, and I had to be somewhere, and uh, I got home later than usual, and, and if any of you have dogs, um, you know that they, they, they're unpredictable, you know, and uh, I've got two dogs. They're about the size that they look kind of like Labradors, and they're medium size, and uh, and so they're always excited when I, when I get home. And, uh, and our youngest one's a puppy, and she's finally two years old. So they, they have the run of the house now, so it's no big deal. She doesn't chew everything imaginable up. And uh, so I was so tired that I just made sure they were all taken care of. And um, I went in and laid down for a little bit, but the bedroom door's open. But if you ever know, especially this time of year, dogs have a tendency to like whether it's it's because of the heat or or fleas or whatever they, they scratch themselves more well I have like a it's not quite a hardwood floor but it, it's a real like tight carpet so when Phoenix scratches his rear it's like bam 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 on the floor I mean it is really loud it like echoes through the house and it's fast you know so I'm building up to tell you that I told you that's because it's part of the story so I go in, I lay in a bed. I mean, it's been, you know, I, I don't like air conditioning, so I had the windows open, you know, how hot it was yesterday. So, wham, I fall asleep, you know. Well, isn't it amazing? They say if you can remember your dreams, you slept well. I, it, I, I don't know all, everything about that, but I guess researchers or psychologists tell you that. So, anyway, so I'm in this deep sleep. Well, I'm in the sleep kind of going through the dream, and I can actually look back and remember this. So, I'm, I'm trying to wake up in the dream because someone is trying to break into the house. Now, but I can't quite, I can't quite get up because I didn't realize in the dream, but as I was sleeping, my shoulder fell asleep. 
So I'm trying to get up in the dream, but I can't move my shoulder in the dream. And all I hear in the dream is I'm trying to get up. I can't get up. I hear this, bam, 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 bam. And that's all I hear. And I'm trying to wake up. And finally, I did wake up, and there's Phoenix still wham, wham, wham on the floor. And my shoulder, I can't move because it fell asleep. (laughs) But what I'm getting at is, We all have something to where, you know what, I can't wait to go here or do this or do that. And that's rest to you. That's rest physically to you. Physically some way, we all have something, whether it's a nap, a hobby, go on vacation, your day off, whatever it might be. We have something that we love to do to rest. Now, let me ask you a question. What brought brought you here today? Now, my, my crazy life didn't bring you here today. I know that. But what brought you here today? God's Spirit brought you here today. Don't forget that. The Spirit of God brought you here today. And the reason the Lord, is you got up this morning, you made a decision, the Holy Spirit was working in your life, you decided that you were going to worship the Lord today, and you want to hear from God. You want to hear from God. When we look at God's Word today, and we talk about rest, and we're going to get into that, what's the very first thing that that drains us of of our energy? And the devil, if, if you're here today as a Christian, the devil can't take your soul, but it can beat you up in your head, in your mind. So that being said, look at look at God's Word in Matthew chapter 11, and verses 28 and 29, to me, the, the verse that, of verses of all verse when it comes to rest in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Jesus speaks these words, and he's saying these words, even though he was speaking to the people of the day, he's talking to you and I right now. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you, you will, notice what it says here, you, that's you today, you will find rest for your souls. Now, I want to encourage you, if you don't have a message Bible, I wrote this down last night, even though this is part of a message Bible. If you don't have a message Bible, I always like to say it's a storybook on the Bible. And if you don't understand something quite in the Bible, get a message Bible. You could take it, reference it, and, and it, it really easy can explain it to you. Let me read to you. I love, uh, there's a couple verses that I really, really love in the message Bible that speak this. And this is what I wanted to hit you today in your life, and then we're going to apply it. Same verses, listen to what the Message Bible says to you and I today. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you even burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and I will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. And I love this last part. Learn and learn from me. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. What happens? Where do, where do we get anxious where do, about whatever it is? Maybe you're anxious about your kids, high school, grade school, I don't know, uh, college, whatever it might be. And you're, you're, you're concerned about what is getting ready to take place this next school year, whatever. Maybe it's your relationship, maybe it's your job situation. And you know what? It so gets you in your head, in our head, that it drains you from every area of your life. It could be some uh, health situation. It could be uh, a relationship. I don't know. But you're, you're constantly, whether we know or not, we're constantly driving, thinking about all these different things. And if we're not careful, we lose the joy in our life. 
You ever ask somebody, hey, you know, you, you talk to somebody and they're friends with you. You say, you know, well, I haven't seen you laugh lately. What's, what's the problem? I, I don't, I, I, you're not smiling like you used to. It's because the devil somehow has got you so anxious, so worried about or fearful about what it is. You, because why? You and I as human beings, we're trying to control the situation. But God says, I want you to recognize who Jesus is in your life. First and foremost, he says, come to me. As a Christian, that means you know today, we know today that we're forgiven. You're completely forgiven. You know, isn't it amazing? I was talking to somebody this week because I wanted to make sure that they knew they were, they were, they'd been backslidden. They're coming back to the Lord. They want to follow the Lord. And I, and I was sharing with this other person, make sure that they understand as they, as they start to come back to the Lord, the devil will bring up things from their past to try and stop them from coming back to Jesus and make sure that they know the day that they accepted Jesus Christ, this is you, this is me, that we were forgiven for our past, present, and future sins. Once and for all forgiven. That's what Jesus says when he says, come to me. So the question is, are you really believing today at the beginning that you really know when the devil brings up your past and says you're not adequate for the future, do you really know and recognize who Jesus is in your life. He is, if you will let him, he is in complete control because he's forgiven you. He has forgiven me. He has forgiven you for all of our sins. And that's what he says. You want real rest? Come to me. Come to me and I'm going to teach you. And this is what we're going to look at in the next verse. He's going to teach us how to live. You know, as, as, as parents do, we're constantly, as, as the day the kids are born, you start to teach them. And then we get a certain age, it's called teenagers, that we know everything, right? So we don't have to learn anything else once, you know, we see that brought in back into our life as our kids are teenagers. But as we want to learn, and that's the key, do you want to learn today? No, I say, well, that's what you mean. I mean this. You say, Lord, here it is. I'm coming to you. I leave it with you. And then that next week, you walk out the door, you take it back again. Jesus says, are you going to learn from me? Because here's what he wants to teach us, and then we'll look at the next verse. He wants to teach us the unforced rhythm of grace. That's what he wants to do. That's why there's adversity that comes in your life and my life because he's trying to teach you when this, when this happens, I, I want you to learn from me. And this difficult situation, if you really trust me, it's going to help you the next time. Come to me. You and I first have to be willing, instead of pulling back, trying to figure it out ourselves, drop it all before him, and say, Jesus, here, here am I. I'm right. Not my situation, not my circumstance. Here is me, me. And I want you to take my life. I'm going to learn. I'm going to watch who you are, and we're going to learn about that. Well, let's build on it. Let's look at another verse. I want you to look at the book of Romans. And there's probably... A few times a year that we, we always look at this verse because it's one of the theme verses of our church because I believe it's one of the theme verses in the Bible. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, it talks about sin in our life. It talks about the victory that you and I have if we're willing to look to Jesus. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Let me read it again. For here, listen to it. For if by one man's offense, that's, that's now we're living in because of the sin of Adam, sin came to the world. We live in a sinful nature. But because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, not religion, religion wears us out. A relationship with Jesus, that's what I want you to recognize. 
We can receive not just grace, but the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. What happens? If we recognize that, you will reign in life. You'll reign in life, it says, through the one, through Jesus Christ. That's, that's what he's wanting to get across today. You know, I, I want you to recognize that, that, that you're going to mess up sometimes. You, I mean, let me go back to last week if I can. You remember last week when I was talking about I got conned by the homeless guy? You remember when I was telling you that? Okay. Okay, so if you weren't here last week, you know, I always say give to homeless people so forth. So if you weren't here, let me say it real quick and let me give you the, the rest of the story this week. So last week, I'm outside a store. I'm sitting there parked. The light's red. The guy's there. He's got a sign up. He says, uh, uh, he says, you know, I've lost my voice. It says on the sign, I've lost my voice. Help me. I, I'm trying not to follow Satan. Okay, and that's what it said on the, on the sign. So, of course, I didn't realize I spent $32 in the store. I remember specifically because I didn't have any other, not one dollar in my wallet. So, I actually was on my way to the ATM machine. And, and so, I started scrambling for all this change. And I felt bad. The guy's there. It looks horrible, the whole thing. So, you know, I get all this change out. And uh, I give it to the guy. And I, when I give it to the guy, he, uh, he says, oh, oh. And I see the lights getting ready to change. And there's people behind me, and he goes, oh, th thank you, thank you. And um, I say, no problem. And then I realized I had these little, uh, these little message Bibles in the back seat. So I grabbed one really quick, and I said, and I'm starting to go away now because the lights are people behind me, and I gave him the message Bible. And he takes it, and he goes like this. <laughs> and then he yells at me. A miracle just took place. He couldn't speak, now he's yelling. And he yelled the, the bizarre, most bizarre thing. He says, I don't, I, he yells it, I don't read in Hebrew. What does that mean? I didn't have a clue. So I, I start to drive down the road. I'm going, I am so glad. That's it. all I had was change. I always give them do, more dollar bills and I'm, I'm just driving around. I can't believe I got con guy this guy. And I talked about how last week we shouldn't judge people and why we do this. We do it because the Lord tells us to do it. And so this week, back at the same store, thankful it wasn't him. Okay, this is what I want you to get, though. This is where we get into trouble. This is where G we can't see Jesus clear enough when we judge. Because what I wanted it not to do was, what did I do? I took a message. I'm not this great person, but I took this message Bible out. You guys actually paid for it. But I took this message Bible out. I, I put some dollar bills in it. And I gave it to the girl. Now, why did I do that? It's because I didn't want to generalize in a judgment her situation because of him. Why is it that because of the way we have been hurt in life, because of unforgiveness, we lose out, bitterness comes in, and we judge a certain way because we've been hurt a certain way in life. And if you're willing to bring that, and this is the key, the, the, if Jesus has given us this an amazing amount of abundance of grace. And then it says what well, it says, you can't work your way to heaven. It even says righteous. Righteousness actually means right living. Right living. It's a gift. I'm here to tell you today, you know what? You've got some issues. I do too. You've got some issues. And, you know, it's amazing. We used to, you know, a couple weeks ago, I'm talking about how, you know, I try and do, you know, I always don't do, you know, of course, the right thing, but I try at least to have a, 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 a good diet. Well, you know what, the next week I'm out with my daughter, Alex, she was, she was dead. She said, what you were talking about last week? You don't have a good diet. You eat Donato's pizza, you do this, you do that, you do this. You, and she's just cutting me all apart. And then Navelle, then they both get together. It's like, Dad, you got to stop doing this, and you're doing that, and I don't know why you're doing this. And whatever happened when you said you were going to do that? Bam, 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 they're doing this song. And then the, to even pile on that, when my son it travels for his, he's not home very much, when he comes home, he's with the girls with me, so he actually imitates me of whatever all the girls say, so he does it physically in front of me when the girls are saying it. 
So my self-esteem is, is gone. <laughs> but but what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, listen, you, we've all got issues. Stop it. Stop letting the devil come at you. You know, it's so true. If your mate tells you something that you're doing, you know, guess what? You're doing it. That's the truth. Now, man, I, I'm not going to tell you anything to say to your wives, but I'm just saying, I'm going to stay out of that, but I'm just saying we have to recognize that we're not perfect. We need a Savior. And if you come to Jesus and you quit trying to judge, you quit trying to figure it out, you quit trying to do it on your own, and you go to Jesus, not religion, not whatever church it is, not whatever you think it, you go directly to Jesus, not a relationship, a relationship, and you say, Lord, I know I mess up, but I know as a Christian you forgive me. Right there, you have started and you're on your way to learning to learning the lesson of that unforced rhythm of grace. Then you take it to where you know that you're so forgiven that in your relationship at home, wherever it might be, then, then you pull back. You begin to judge less because you know the only reason that you're living right is because it's a gift also. Abundance of grace and a gift of righteousness. When you begin to live that way and you see Jesus in everything that you do, and you know that you're forgiven, but you know that you've got to look at other people a certain way because you know that you, you are just as messed up in some ways as they are, and only by God's grace are you reigning in life. How many times, and let me just preface this, how many times did I say, it doesn't mean you have to be around that person. You don't have to be hurt again. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you want to reign in life, you cannot do it with bitterness. You can't do it. Because Jesus died for us while we we're sinners. Jesus tells us to be kind and tender hearted, forgiving one another as Christ has forgiven us. You want to be on your way to really resting in, in life? It's resting to the place to where, you know what, you've been hurt? Of course you have. But know that, that you're going to reign in life still, no matter how somebody's hurt you. Because you're going to follow Jesus, and you're going to learn from him. And he's going to teach you that unforced rhythm of grace. Know that you're forgiven. Know that we forgive others and know that as we're on the road to living right, the only reason that we're really living right is because who Jesus is in our life. It just takes a second to destroy everything, doesn't it? Well, no, today, if you're, if you're on track with the Lord, it's because of the Lord. It's not because of us. So here's how it happens. I will say this time and time again if you attend this church, this book, this book is about a person. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Everything in here is about Jesus. And Jesus can help you and help me in any area of our life. And the reason that he wants a relationship with you, because he wants you to so know that you need him today and tomorrow, that I challenge you and will all the time just to take five minutes of what, not a book, not a Bible, his word, what Jesus wants to say to you specifically about your life, my life, because all of us are in different situations. Exactly what you need for tomorrow is in here for you. Jesus wants to speak to you. Learn from me. And he says, if you're willing to just spend a little time with me, just to, I challenge you, five minutes of reading about, exact, you're going to open this up tonight or tomorrow, and whatever you're going to face tomorrow, you're, you're going to see exactly what you need in here. 
Now, how's that done? And then we're going to close. Yeah, how, how do you do that? I mean, how do we live this Dallas? How do we live this Christian life and rest? Because every day something different is going to happen. That's true. We're looking at this, this last verse and we'll close. Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 1 and 3. The children of Israel, many of them died in the wilderness because of why? Why did they die in the wilderness and not go into the promised land? And they, they went around the mountain for 40 years and the younger generation only could go in. Why? Why did that happen? The Bible tells us God's word. Jesus speaks this right now. This is what he says. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, God has promised you if you will come to him, he will rest, he will give you rest in your mind. How's he going to do that? We're going to look at that. Entering his rest, let us fear, let us, any of you seem to have, if come short of it, we come short of it because we're going to try and do it our way. And we're going to say this, this can't work. So we're going to be so drained from it mentally and emotionally. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard, say that again, the word which they heard, God's word, the Bible, what we're reading out of today, Jesus is speaking, did not profit them. Why? Why didn't it profit them? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have been believed do enter that rest. There's the key. Whatever situation you're involved in, whatever it be that you've been hurt in, whatever it is that you might face and you log this message for the future in his word, you can read this, but you've got to connect it by faith. You got to so believe that God is so big, that Jesus is so real. And you, as a follower, as a believer, as a son or daughter of God, that you know that you know that you know without a doubt. When you hear the news or whatever what happens, that yes, emotionally it's going to hit you, but you're going to push it out away. Because you are God's child. And the same if you're here as a parent. You know exactly as a parent what your kid needs. No matter how old they are, you know exactly what they need. And you get frustrated when? When they just won't listen because you know what they need. You're speaking to them. You know them better than anybody. Jesus knows you better than anybody. You are unique. He's created you. He has saved you. And by faith, when you read this word, you have got to trust him. And if you're willing to trust him, I'm just not up here preaching. I'm just not up here saying, you know, oh, yeah, okay, go ahead, Dallas, just whatever. Let me hit it real with you. Everything that I've been through, and most of you know it, and all that stuff, and all that mess. 30 years of marriage gone, whole thing, lost everything financially, da, 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 both my parents dying, da, 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 da. It, what it did to my kids, the whole thing. Let me tell you one of the hardest things. When I was f 54, going through this at time, um, I got a phone call, and I shared with you how that I felt that little Sean, my foster son, the Lord plopped him down in my life <laughs> just to save me from focusing on my, oh, woe is me, everything I'm going through. And I had to really get my act together. He's three years old. I'm 54. What do I know about <laughs> me by myself, my head all over the place, and I'm going to do this? Okay, Lord, yeah, yeah, you really, this is great. But he'd been a part of our life since he was, uh, he was born. And I know I didn't have a choice. And I didn't know what I was. I remember, I, I don't know if I sure said the very first night I had him, Alexis, married now, my older daughter, she, she goes out on a date. I'm like calling her up, screaming at her. He, he won't quit crying. He's just all over the place. I'm going, I don't care who you're out with, where you're at, you get home right now, and you can help me with this kid. I don't know what I'm doing. You thought this was a great idea, and all the kids that, yeah, Dad, you got to do this. You're the, you know, whatever. All that I went into what I spoke before. So she comes, anyways, it starts to settle down. 
And, you know, he just became, man, we just, for a year and almost eight months, that kid and I did everything, day and night. And the Lord taught me about the Lord by him, because all that kid ever wanted when he was with me, he didn't hardly eat much. He just lived on chocolate milk. And I'm telling you, night and day, night and day. I also want some more chocolate milk. I also want some more chocolate milk. You know what? I go get more chocolate. Go, put it in that little sippy cup. Get more chocolate. Get more chocolate milk. If we're out, we go to the grocery store. What I'm saying is, that's the same thing for you and I and the Lord. The Lord loves you. And when you are, are going through things or you're hurt or you're young, he's there. He's not going to stop. Every time that you ask him, he's going to be there for you. And so this went on and on, and this is where it hits home, and this is where I want you to trust the Lord. I get a phone call, and I have a good relationship with his mom, and uh, she calls, and I had this kid, I'm telling you, day and night, I was only away from him for, for four times, and he gave me my life back, literally, because I saw Jesus through him and how my heavenly father watches over me and what I was doing with him. I get a phone call, and his birth mom calls from Florence and says, hey, I, I, I wanna, I'm coming up to get him back. And, uh, I, you know, I wasn't ready for that, and I, it had happened before, and I thought, well, it's not going to happen. Well, she comes up and went down to the courthouse and signed all the papers, and I had eight hours. After a year and eight months, day and night, I had eight hours to, that was it. And uh, so, you know, I'm just a mess. And uh, so I'm trying to explain to him, you know, he's, again, he's just been with me the whole time. And I'm trying to explain to him that what's going to happen. And it, it didn't make sense. He was six at the time. So we go to Summit Mall, and um, my one daughter's with me. And um, you know, I built mid down, and I was just shaking all over. And I, <laughs> and I prayed over him, and I gave him a kiss and hug. And his mom was there. And, and Novella, my one daughter, says, Dad, I, I can't take this. Because she helped raise him when we were in Florida. She goes, I'm, I'm going to throw up. I can't, I can't do this. And I said, okay. So I kissed and hugged him. And, and, and he was there standing next to his mom. And he was glad to see her. And he was standing there with her. And I turned and walked away. And I couldn't look back. And he yelled at me. And he said, Dallas, Dallas, am I coming home tonight when it gets dark out? And I lost it. And I lost it for a while, and I got mad, and I didn't understand. So about a few weeks goes by, and I, I was just coming out of everything that I'd been involved with of all the past few years, and, and now I'm back in a hole again. And I'm like, I, Lord, I don't, I don't get this. I don't get this. But you know, I knew what I knew what I knew about God's word. I knew I had to trust him. But I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Are, are, is there something sometimes in your life you know, you know you got to trust him, but you just can't? It, it's so hard sometimes because you are emotionally, physically, everything involved. Here's what we have to do. We have to know in our spirit, our spirit is so powerful that it overtakes your emotions and it overtakes everything that you think about. And you have to be, I have to be willing, whatever it is, to see Jesus. If I'm going to rest in any situation, is to see Jesus and to know in my spirit, when I read his word, Jesus is speaking to me, that he's got it handled. So a couple weeks went by. And I was still a mess. And I went over to one of my daughters there uh, that's married her, her uh, uh, in-laws. And one of their kids had kids. So little Sean would go over and play with them all the time. I wasn't ready for this. I didn't prepare myself for this. So here I am I'm going over to their house. As I go over to their house, I pull in the driveway. And, and there's, there's Cheney and Eli. Well, all, for the last over a year and a half, there's... He's been playing with these two little kids. And I just went numb again. And all I could see was him playing with the kids. I couldn't even stay long. I left. I'm driving home. I'm on the freeway in Fairlawn. Going out this way. And I'll never forget. 
I was so angry and I, I was so upset and I, and I was, I slammed the steering wheel and, and I'm going out by the, the Cleveland Mass Road exit and I look through the sunroof and I said, Lord, I don't want to, but I know what I know about who you are in my life. And I know that you know me. I said, Lord, I don't get it. And I was a mess, and I looked up to heaven, and I said, Lord, I got to trust you. So here it is, Lord. Here it is. I don't get it. I'm angry. I'm upset. I trust you. I'm going to trust you. And I'm telling you, I, I know right where it was in the freeway. It's like the Lord just took everything from me. And he began to show me things that I couldn't have learned any other way. Do you want to learn from him? Do you want to really rest? And however you've been hurt, whatever it is you're going to face in the future, you got to first know you're forgiven. You got to be willing to forgive. And today the question is, if you really want to rest, are you going to believe his word enough mixed by faith? Are you going to have the faith today in your life? If you're going to walk into that promised land, if you're going to reign in life and you can't figure it out, you got to say, Lord, I don't know why, but I'm going to have to trust you. Because as you as my Savior, I don't have a choice. I know what you've done before. And in this situation, it's so difficult what you're facing today, or maybe you don't even know that you're going to hear in the future. Jesus wants you to rest as a Christian. And when you rest, and when I rest, we will reign in this life and the joy that you have and the peace that you have you can't get it on any vacation you can't get it doesn't matter if the Lord's blessed you financially and all things are good you can't get it that way but when Jesus gives what you need in your spirit life is amazing the way that you live let's 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 pray so our heads are bowed today. You know, maybe just put this message in, a po- in your pocket. Maybe things are okay right now or good. And, but we'll get that phone call and they, you know, whatever it might be, that's life. But I, I, I want you to know, you don't have to do what you're doing alone. You're not, right now today, you're not alone. Jesus is your Savior. He's your Heavenly Father. He's given you this book, His Word, that He is going to show you and me every day if we spend a few minutes with Him. Exactly what we need as a wife, as a husband, as a child, as a teenager, as a decision, in a health situation. You're an adult kid. I don't know what it is, but I know that you need him just like I do. Life is not easy, but you can have victory. And you can reign in life through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the way that he gives us to live. It's like no other way. And he will give you what we have looked at the last couple weeks, the spirit of wisdom that will overtake your life. And you'll say, Lord, even though I don't understand it, your word says, trust you with all of my heart. And if we do that today, if you trust him today with all of your heart, Don't try and figure it out. He knows you. He loves you. 
And as the days go by and the weeks go by, you'll begin to see a little clearer and the joy will will come back in your life. Father, we thank you today, Lord, you brought us here in spirit. Lord, you brought us here for a message, whether it's for today or tomorrow, that we can rest. We can rest our mind because our soul is at peace. Because Jesus, by faith, by faith, by faith, we trust your word. And you tell us you cannot, you will not ever lie to us. You'll never tease us. Father, you love us like we love our kids more than we can ever imagine. So, Lord, we help us, Lord, whatever decisions people are having today, whatever they're going through in life, that we'll trust you. We'll believe your word. We'll forgive as we've been forgiven. And, uh, and by faith, Jesus, that we know that we can reign through you. Lord, if there's someone here today as I close that doesn't know you as their Savior, may they just come speak with me. And it's not me, not any one of us. It's you who will save them through your blood that was shed on the cross and your victory through death, hell, and the grave that you reign forevermore and they can accept you. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us today as we...